Well, hey there, YouTube. We are done with another lawn mowing. Today is June 1st, 2021, and it's a Tuesday. For those of you that watch my channel, you may remember I used to mow my lawn on Thursdays. Last week, I decided to bump it up one day to Wednesday because the lawn is just growing incredibly thick and fast. And then this week, I bumped it on up to Tuesday. So I went from 7 to 6 to 5. And, uh, or actually, no. I actually went from 7 to 6 to 6. So we're still on a 6-day on a six, uh, six mow. Um, it, like I say, it's growing very, what, what I consider to be fast and thick. Especially in the heat we're getting now, we're probably getting up in, you know, about in the 90s right now, maybe mid-90s mid or so in the daytime. So what I did, since I have, you know, it's like a 17, eight, like a 17 or 18 year old lawnmower, um, you know, I don't have anything fancy. It's a rear bagger, six and a half horsepower. You guys have probably seen it. Not self-propelled, like, you know, I, I really don't need it for this little bit here. But, um, you know, it's older. It's not a Honda. It's not a Toro. You know, it's not something real fancy. I think it's a yard machine or something. Got it for free in the trash like 17, 18 years ago. I've told the story. But anyways, um, so each week I'll alternate how I'll mow. Like one week I'll mow this way, diagonal. The other week I'll, you know, diagonal this way. As you could see the lawn. This week I felt it was thick enough where I could have got away with just doing one pass over the lawn. But, you know, there's some stragglers here and there. So, because it's pretty thick. So what I did was I did like I've done sometimes before. You could probably see there. I've mowed it, uh, let's see. Yep, I went this way first. And then I went back and did it diagonal this way here second. And I'll show you that as we walk. Once I turn, you'll be able to see here. Okay, so there's those other lines. And all the things that look like it's not even, those are just my footprints. I do keep my lawn watered very well. And um, I mow it pretty high because it is a cold weather grass. It's a uh, Kentucky bluegrass. So in the hot months, you definitely want a longer lawn. It helps hold the moisture in. You don't need as much water. You know, it doesn't turn brown. So, um, it's worth it to me just to mow it twice. That way I don't have any little stragglers. I make sure to get everything evenly. So, normally what I'll do is I'll go ahead and edge first. You know, I'll, I'll go with my string trimmer and I'll, I'll edge everything. And then I'll come back with the string trimmer, you know, and I'll hit it this way. And I'll go around my trees and around my rocks, and then I'll mow. This time around, I went ahead and mowed first. I uh, cut it uh, diagonally this way first. Then I went around with the string trimmer, because I knew I, I was going to do it two times this time. So then I went around with the string trimmer, string trimmed everything, and then I did the other diagonal cut. So sometimes I'll do it that way. Maybe if I'm in a hurry, I'll just do it, you know. Just, you know, one one time and leave it be. But I'm pretty particular about the about the lawn. Um, you know, it is a chore to mow the lawn sometimes, especially in the heat. But uh, I get a lot of gratification after seeing it afterwards, seeing how nice it looks. So to me, it's, uh, you know, it's really not that much of a chore. It's something that I, you know, get, get to see my uh, work when I'm done. And I'm, you know, definitely happy with it. As you can see, I, I try to match both both areas, this area and that area, and of course I, I mow them. I have to mow them in separate air, separate spots. I do this one first and that one second, because of course I can't go through the rocks. <laughs> so I just try to line them up. Like I say, those are just my feet prints in the grass. Give it an hour, you won't even see them anymore. Um, and my sprinklers give excellent coverage. Um, keeps everything watered except the only area 
as you, if you can see right here, and I'm sure every lawn has something like this. You can see how it goes out a little bit there? Right here in this area. Now, the sprinklers do reach it, but it probably doesn't get quite as much water as the rest of the lawn. And even if it does, we get a lot of direct sunlight right here all day. And I'm sure this curb heats up and the rocks heat up. So I have not spot watered this yet. I've just let my sprinklers do it. But if you if you could see right here in this one spot, you know, I have a little, couple little, I want to say brown patches, but it, it's definitely more so than the rest of the lawn. You can see it's just a little dry on that outer edge. So what I'll do is in the hotter months like we're in now and going forward, I will spot water this uh, area right here with my hose. I'll just soak it pretty good right here, you know, a couple times a week and we won't have any problems. But I just wanted to share the weekly lawn mowing with you folks. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, the cherry tree, it's got a bunch of green cherries on it. They'll be red soon. Both my fruit trees, the apple and the pear, have tons of fruit on it. This little peach, I'm not expecting anything this year. It's too small anyway. Um, that's growing real nice over there in the corner. It's filling out real nice, looking nice this time of year. I really like that. It'll get bigger. Just give you a real quick view. Not, nothing's really changed. It's pretty much all the same thing in here. Might have added a couple more plants here and there. You know, things are just getting bigger for sure. Uh, things are definitely growing. Here's that purple rob locust. It's growing very well. Well, I guess I did add a couple things over here. What the heck? Put these lavenders in here. You know what? I bought them on clearance and I needed somewhere to put them, so I just picked these pots up for like 10 bucks a piece just to, you know, I buy a lot of, lot of plants that I don't even have anywhere to plant. But here's a milkweed I put in here. Um, hopefully we'll get some monarch butterflies. Not holding my breath, but it would be nice. This pot here is doing great. Look at those uh, primroses. Man, those, those came back from last year. Bunch of strawberries, primroses, there's a sunflower. Yeah, things are really starting to pop off now that it's, uh, it's warm. You know, we're getting in those 95 degree days. And yeah, I've been chopping up a bunch of wood. I got tons of wood, I got all this for free. So I figured I'd go ahead and put my son to work back here running the, uh, the wood splitter. I still got tons on my trailer. But this is wet wood. Next year it'll be ready to burn. All this other stuff's dry. I got like probably two cords of dry over there. And I've still got half a trailer of this stuff. I had to trim the roses yesterday because they were gonna close that area in. I have to keep that trimmed. Climbing roses. Matter of fact, here's that log, log splitter right here. A little electric hydraulic deal. That thing works great. So here's what we got going on out here. Things are getting nice and lush looking, and I'm definitely very happy with the yard. Um, all my containers here are filling in. Just very happy with everything. I, I, I think it's looking very nice for where I live. Uh, this here is a cilantro basil. So when the wife makes tacos or spaghetti or anything, I've got more stuff to plant. I bought more stuff here. Have a fox glove. Yes, I know it's supposed to be poisonous and it'll kill everything, but you know what? It's pretty. Who's going to eat it? The mints has exploded. Look at this cat mint. Just doing great. Uh, here's my wheelbarrow full of junk. Got some sunflowers, strawberries. There's that grass that I told you guys would get real big where the birdhouses are. See? Kind of gives them somewhere to hide. There's my California poppy. I'm so happy with that. That's just amazing. Tons of fruit on the pear tree. I don't know if you can see it. There's, there's probably got to be at least 200 uh, pears on there. I'm probably going to have to thin it out. There's a grape coming up. Probably won't get anything this year, but next year it should be good. 
And here's this area up here at the, up the top that really fills out about this time. Got a bunch of mammoth sunflowers and this grass. I'm not sure what that is. The landscaper called it a Mexican grass. I'm not sure. But the carnation comes back every year. There's my cactus back here. I leave this here for the tortoise. It's starting to get uh, flowers on it. I'm going to have to pick them and give them to the tortoise. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to comment. You know, go ahead and comment if you like. And uh, give me a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. You know, I'm up here in northern Nevada. It's, it's not like, uh, you know, we live in a real lush place like a lot of folks do on the east coast or something. You know, where stuff grows like crazy. I got to work kind of hard up here to, you know, get stuff growing like it is. That's for sure. And uh, it's dry up here. It's extremely dry. I think on average we're like 7% humidity, if that. And, uh, you know, in the summer... We'll have about 100 degree days up here. A lot better than Las Vegas, about 95, 100 up here. And it's a dry heat. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Y'all be good.